Let's give the leaves a whole new turn Why don't we feed them to the worms? Hello, and welcome to the All About Worms video. This is part four of our Food Too Good to Waste video series. Worm composting, also known as vermicomposting, is the use of red wiggler worms to decompose food waste. The purpose is to grow more red wigglers and to produce valuable worm castings. Vermicomposting keeps food waste out of the landfill and the castings encourage rapid growth of healthy plants. The process is simple and works with anything from small bins to giant factories. Worm bins are easy to manage and produce no odor. Worm composting allows us to experience the full cycle of turning dead and rotten materials into worms and worm castings, which then can grow healthy food. Worms are easier to care for than a plant. They can tolerate lapses in attention, like if you forget to water or feed them regularly. You can use almost any kind of container as your bin to do worm composting, as long as you manage the flow of waste materials into the bin provide appropriate bedding, and monitor the process. Building your own bin is really easy. Just buy a plastic box between 50 to 60 quarts at your local store. Drill five or six 3 8 inch diameter holes at the very top of the long sides of the box. Recycle some screen wire. It could be aluminum or plastic screening by cutting it into small squares to cover the holes. Use hot glue to glue the screen into place. Be careful and wear a glove when working with hot glue. Your bin is now ready. Prepare a bedding layer of brown materials to get started. You can use chopped leaves or shred up newspaper or even pieces of cardboard. The bedding will absorb moisture quickly from the wet food and the humidity in the bin. Put a two to three inch layer of the bedding in the bottom of the bin. Bedding is both protection for the worms and energy food for them to eat. Add your worms now. It's usually one pound purchased through the internet. Today, however, we're moving some worms from a full bin to start a new one. Cover with more of the shredded bedding. The worms we use are red wigglers, which are not common in native soils. They are nature's cleanup crew and are often found in places like manure piles. They eat much faster than night crawlers consuming about one-fourth of their body weight per day. Do the math and consider what it would be like if you ate one-fourth or more of your body weight every day. This is why you won't find red wigglers in the garden or farm soil. There's simply not enough rotten food for them to eat. Red wigglers do not make burrows, but move horizontally in the top layers of the soil. Worms like soft, moist food that they can suck into their mouths because they don't have teeth. Favorite foods for worms are things like melon rinds, soaked oatmeal, coffee grounds, and apple peels. Running the food through a blender will make it into small pieces that will be easy for the worms to eat. This food slurry will disappear quickly because it's 100% ready for the worms. The color is purple because we use some purple cabbage in the food scraps that we put in the blender. The energy and nutrients from the food and the brown materials are digested by the bacteria and the worms. Adding foods that the worms can't eat will create an environment where the food rots and smells bad. This can ruin the balanced ecosystem in the bin. Avoid dumping a large quantity of any one kind of food into the bin at any one time. Now that you know what to feed your worms, it's time to add some food to your bin. Soaked oatmeal, squash, sweet potato skins work well. Don't feed too much at a time. Put a small amount of food in the bin and don't feed again until that food is gone. A three-pronged garden fork is a great tool for working in the worm bin. When feeding your worms, pull the top brown layer back, add some food, and then gently cover again. Worms will continually eat the bedding layer, so add to the layer when you start to see the wet food and the castings breaking through from below. Balance the moisture level in the system by adding dry brown materials. Check the bottom level of the bin occasionally for liquid buildup. If there is liquid, there's not been enough brown material added or maybe too much wet food. 
foul odors are the usual result. You may need to drill a drain hole in the bottom of the bin and place a flat dish or saucer to collect any excess liquid. Usually, just a small amount will come out and evaporate. Worms need an enclosure that will maintain 80% humidity, yet has ventilation to bring in fresh air. Worms are valuable in an ecosystem because they consume waste to feed both the producers and consumers, both the plants and the animals. The nutrients that the worm digested are released as castings that can be easily absorbed and used by plants. Worms also improve the soil by making more airflow, holding more water, and creating more soil life. Finally, the worms often become food for a wide range of larger organisms. Your new worm bin will soon become a complex ecosystem of life. With the help of this inexpensive USB microscope, let's look at the worms up close and see what life is like in a worm bin. Worms are slimy, it's true, but the slime helps them exchange oxygen and give off carbon dioxide. So you could say that the slime works like the worm's lungs, but they really don't have lungs. The liquid waste of the worm is also in the slime, so the slime helps the worm clean its body. Finally, that slime helps glue soil particles together. This provides plant food and helps the soil to breathe. This tangle of worms is normal and really healthy. The shiny black material in these pictures is worm castings, also known as worm poop. Worms have tiny claws that can push out or pull in. You can see the claws on the bottom side of this worm. This is how they move. While you are looking through the worm bin, you will find little yellow or brown balls that look like tiny footballs. These are the worm's cocoons, or worm eggs. I photographed these cocoons on a penny just to give you an idea of how big they are. Yellow ones are new, and they turn brown as the babies grow. And this one is the empty walls of the cocoon after the babies have left. Baby worms in the cocoon eat the food around them, grow, and emerge as tiny clear worms. Finding a baby worm is lucky because you can see the hearts near the head pumping blood, see the blood pumping back along the body, and see the food in its gut. I found this baby worm by itself on a piece of newspaper. You may be surprised to see the other creatures living in the bin also. These are fun to study too. This familiar sow bug seems to like its slimy home. Well, welcome to the wonderful world of red wigglers. Enjoy the time you spend exploring your red wiggler worm bin.